Hi Sagittarius, welcome to your November and December 2017 Prosperity Reading. It's Raina here, and so this reading is for matters related to career abundance issues. And I say issues because sometimes this is an energetic thing, or if you want to call it a psychological thing, where you have a blockage regarding your worthiness of attracting abundance to you? Like even if you were to attract it, would you be able to embrace it? And I think that there's a lot of truth in that. When you think about people who do get money and then they just spend it, but it's not really on things that they probably even want. It's almost like blowing it. And it's like it's kind of fun if you have money to be able to feel like you can spend it freely and not have to worry, oh my gosh, I can't, I won't be able to pay this bill or that bill if I have a certain, you know, if I'm spending a certain amount of money. So that feeling, that sensation, I can totally get. But when it gets to the point where they just keep doing it, it's almost like it's, you've heard the term burning a hole in somebody's pocket. It's like they're like, get this away from me. And that's kind of like what they're thinking because they don't feel that they are worthy of it. Think of all the lottery winners who end up broke in a short period of time. Some people will say, oh, well, they just don't know how to manage money. But I think it's deeper than that. I think it's that it came to suddenly for them. They wanted it. It was kind of like this desire from their higher self but their consciousness didn't catch up with them. And so that's what these issues are involving this type of reading that I do. I enjoy doing it on a regular basis. I don't do it monthly. I, I usually do it every other month. And it's just fun to explore this side of things. So in terms of astrological influences for Sagittarius, for the last two and a half years, Saturn has been in our, yes, I'm Sag too, first house or the house of the self. Okay. And on December 20th, we'll go into the second house, which is the earned income sector. Okay. So I mentioned this, I think, in the astrological report for Sagittarius in November, but I'll say it again. I, um, read, you know, I, I watch YouTube videos like everyone else for Sag. Um, and I, I kept seeing comments like, oh, I can't wait for Saturn to leave our sign. Oh, it's just been the most, this has been so bad the last two and a half years. Well, Saturn was in the 12th house before that in Scorpio. And I'm sure there were people that said that at the time, oh, I can't wait for it to leave the 12th house. The point I'm trying to make is that if you are in blaming mode in your life where it's always somebody else's fault, then astrology can be just another vehicle for that. And my point is, or my feeling is that that is all a bunch of bollocks. All right. I have had a great two and a half years. Not everything has been like just constant bliss, but I can like look back at this time period and say, wow, and really mean it. Okay. So I just blew your theory out of the water for those of you who feel that it's been challenging. And I would wager that some of you who say that, and I'm not talking about anybody watching this, but whoever wrote those things, I would, um, I would suggest that they have always thought that way. If it isn't uh, Saturn in their sign, it's Saturn in the 12th house, it's whatever. There's going to be some reason why everything is completely messed up. When Saturn goes into your second house, it's going to bring restrictions on your earned income. Now, I shouldn't say restrictions because that sounds, that really doesn't sound good. It's going to call you to look to task and make you look at your relationship with money 
in a very disciplined way. Let's put it that way. And I think that's amazing. I think that's great because I think Sagittarians tend to be wasteful. I have a moon in, in Virgo, so I'm a lot more conscious of that than some people, but I still, you know, can get it together too. And um, the thing about the law of attraction is, yes, of course, there's more where that came from. You should never think, oh, God, I wasted this. Now I won't have any in the future. No, um, I'm not saying that, but I do think that we have to respect our resources as well. And really, you know, look at what you're spending money on and also how you earn money. Maybe you're doing so in a way that is very inefficient. Maybe you work long hours commuting to a job that takes up a lot of gas, takes up a lot of your time, and then you end up eating out more because you don't feel like you have the energy to cook for yourself. Uh, maybe you could be staying home with your child. Um, there, they did some study that's, that shows, and this of course is American dollars, but if you don't earn over a certain amount of money, it's like a wash to uh, go and um, and get a, and have a job, hold a job while your child is in daycare. But you know, who knows? Maybe people do so for different reasons. Maybe they feel that need to get away from the home. I, I you know, I should I should acknowledge that that might be what's really going on. But I'm just using that as an example. There are many um, people who there's they're like penny wise and pound foolish. And really it's not just about dollars and cents. It's about what is it taking out of you energetically if you are working 12 hour days. I mean, you could even look at it in terms of people who have more than enough, but they could downsize and then they'd have more time for themselves. That could definitely be how this plays out for you. So you may make a really comfortable living, but you have to work um, a lot of hours to do so, and you can't enjoy any of the things that you're working so hard for. That is that trap that a lot of people find themselves in. So maybe that's the angle that you're going to explore these issues with. And uh, I'm trying to think if there are any other things I would bring up about these, um, these transits for the next couple of months. It's kind of like in, in, November, there's a lot of 12th house activity in Scorpio. So it could be like some kind of a guardian angel uh, with Jupiter, which is our ruler in the 12th house. It could be getting assistance from a, I was going to say a secret admirer, but it does, you know, some kind of a behind the scenes kind of a support. And it could even be financial because Jupiter and Venus both can, can indicate that, and they'll both be in that house. Or maybe even um, people who have passed on, I suppose that could um, go along with that, especially if you feel like you had a very deep connection with them. So that's something that's um, going to be playing out in November, and then with Jupiter for the whole year. And also, I think Jupiter in the 12th could be kind of this um, karma, good karma, that is finally paying off for you or us. <clears throat> All right, well, I'm going to just leave that there. I'm going to be picking three cards. Um, two have Native American themes, or I should say Earth themes. The Native American is Earth religion, so I have the Native Spirit deck, the Earth Magic deck, and then the <laughs> I'm usually not this, um, I just, I can't, the, the, why can't I think of the name of that deck? You'd think by now. Okay, well, when I get to it, I'll, the Keepers of the Light. I think it's because it doesn't have the word, you know, angel or something in it that throws me off. Okay. And somebody wrote to me and said, 
why do why do they I like when when people make comments and they act like I'm not going to read it like they're just talking to other viewers and they said something like why do these readers think that we care what decks they're using and it's because I get asked all the time so um, and also because I want to honor these people I mean they created something that's so amazing and you know it's like quoting from a book and not saying what book it is oh wow see I always get the same cards I never got this one before wow you know it's, you, just seeing that word based upon that tsunami that happened um, I, I can't remember what year that was in Indonesia <clears throat> it was so freaky because of the footage you know I'll never forget that what I remember there was like one day and I was just like binge watching all of these tsunami videos because it's horrifying but it's so fascinating at the same time and the one that I really remember was this little boy who was playing at the beach and he could see something weird in the distance you know this black wave and the you know the uh, I believe the ocean receded I think that's what happens before it is like that tidal wave type of thing and it's like wow that is so freaky and he noticed it you know and then all of a sudden it's getting closer and closer and then they realize wow we got to get out of here it's it's just <laughs> it's just so it's it's amazing it's an amazing like um piece of footage and i i tried to find it recently and i couldn't find it but maybe i didn't look hard enough okay um Oh, this is interesting because that looks like a labyrinth. I I don't know if you've walked la a labyrinth before. I have. I just did so last month, as a matter of fact. Um, and um, I'd like to learn more about it because even though I try to be deliberate and meditative, you know, I'm still curious. I was always trying to make sure I was on the right path. Mother Mary, love and peace. Okay, interesting. Now, again, we're looking at this from the career and uh, financial abundance um, angle. So the tsunami card from the Earth Magic deck. Okay, I'm curious to see what this means. Wake up call. Just see what it shows. It shows... The it shows a moon, too. It looks like it's that tidal wave. Um, you're getting a wake-up call. It may be in the form of a significant loss or other traumatic event in your life, typically one that you were not prepared for initially. You may feel stunned at first, surprised by the unexpected events that are occurring. You all, Yet you also know that it is time to draw back the curtain of avoidance and denial and confront the truth that exists in the subtext of this event. You are experiencing a real life drama so there is no need to amplify it more than it, than it already is. Often when you look back after something like this has passed you can recall signs that foreshadowed it happening. There may have been obvious clues that you ignored or omens that were so subtle that they were easy to dismiss as imaginings of the mind rather than the voice of your instinct. There are many anecdotes about animals operating purely on instinct, picking up on clues and naturally seeking higher ground before an approaching tsunami reaches the land. To negotiate this wake-up call, listen closely to your instincts while at the same time seeking the higher ground of spiritual truth. Um, what I would say about this is, and this is just a reminder that this is a general reading, and it's like when I pick the tower card and people write to me, oh my God, this is terrible, this is going to happen. This is for every Sagittarian on the planet. So I think the best way to approach this and why I do think so open-endedly on this with these types of readings is to look at what that means in the overall scheme of things. Not this is going to happen in November and December of 2017. I have to create some barriers or boundaries for my readings so that's why I put certain dates but it's not to suggest that things will be happening um, except for the astrological transits of course because they do go by specific dates but 
in general, there are people in life that are acting as if the other shoe is about to drop. Sagittarians tend not to be those people. Sagittarians tend to live in the moment. And that can have its own negative consequences sometimes. So either way, whether you are indifferent to the future and just live for this moment, or whether you are afraid of impending calamity, um, that both of those are opposite sign, sides of the same coin. And it means that the person really isn't living consciously. One person is kind of just being kind of careless in their life. And with Saturn, when Saturn goes into the second house, that person will probably really feel the impact of that because it's like somebody who is running a boot camp. That's what Saturn is. And they will force that person to look at their finances. End of story. If they're being careless, if they're being irresponsible and not um, maybe paying their bills or just, I, I don't even like the word budget, but really like looking at what you're spending money on when you're, you know, okay, I'll give you an example. I hope this doesn't offend anybody. But if I see somebody in the checkout line and they're buying cut up watermelon or cantaloupe and it's like, you know, at Whole Foods and it's like $7 and I know that all, if I just got out a knife and I cut up a cantaloupe, I could fill up like many of those things for like $3. Um, that is kind of irksome to me because it's like just, I, I realize some people may be doing it for convenience if they're at lunchtime. I understand that. But even if I worked in an office, I would have a knife and I would just be cutting it in the uh, office. I wouldn't be buying $8 containers of can, uh, cantaloupe, okay? So the point is, is that some people are very careless about how they spend money. And um, so these tsunamis, it doesn't even have to be that big of a deal that can just kind of push you over the edge. If you're not um, conscious of how you're spending money, you don't save anything and you don't have anything to back it up with. Um, having things that you don't need, that's another thing that you just get the latest thing and just don't even consider whether it's just sucking money out of your life. Um, but I don't want people to think this is going to happen. This is like the tower card uh, where something can be uh, an unpleasant surprise. But all of these things, these are facts of life. You can have a tsunami not just in, in November and December, but you can have one in January or February. Our lives are very precarious. We don't know what's going to happen next. And the more that we can embrace that and not fear it, the better. But that doesn't mean being foolish and it doesn't mean being paranoid. Those are two um, extremes. And somewhere in the middle is how we need to be, you know. Not afraid, but at the same time, uh, being grounded and so therefore practical. Taking the money that we have, if you don't have that much money, you don't have to say, oh, I'm, I'm poor. I don't have money. You don't say that, but by the same token, you look at your money and say, how can I make this money go the furthest? How can I make this, this me be the most meaningful? Whether it's what you eat and buy as groceries, what you do, all of those things can come into play. Okay, so now this one is um, Native spirit, spirit Circle of Life. And I'm sure it's about the different cycles. All things are possible. Stand in your center and be open. The four winds are bringing your dreams to fruition. Embrace and accept where you are in the great, great circle of life. Bounty and abundance are flowing to you. If you've had relationship or financial challenges, things are about to change. Oh, that sounds good. The circle of life known as the medicine wheel in Native American traditions symbolizes a cosmology that honors all the circles of life. 
Those in Western cultures tend to see life as linear. However, those in indigenous cultures see all life as a circle. When this card chooses you, it's time to honor and cherish all aspects of the great circle. All parts of the journey have beauty and grace. There's beauty in the rising sun, just as there is in the setting sun. To only revel in the rising sun and demean times of endings depletes your energy. Choose what is, and you become master of the universe, or at least your own personal universe. And they give you a possible project to do. Create a medicine wheel for yourself. It can be simple as creating a circle of stones that you place on your desk, or making a circle of stones or pine cones that you lay outdoors. As you place each part of the circle, hold the intent that you're honoring all aspects of your life. And, you know, that reminds me of energy grids, which I'm interested in doing. i got to find out more about how to make one. And the last card is, uh, but what I wanted to say about that is, um, you know, piggybacking on the first card is sometimes people will compromise themselves because they're afraid of losing their jobs. That's, you know, they talk about the circle of life and endings and that tsunami, that wake up call. Sometimes you get, um, it could be in the form of a health crisis it could, that forces you to leave your job or at least take a, a, an extended absence. It could be something in your marriage or your, you know, your family, your child, something um, that is amiss that is happening that forces you to really put your life in a proper context. And the point is, is that we fear those kinds of situations, not knowing that what preceded them, what was happening uh, before this so-called calamity was actually a bad situation. So you're actually going to improve your life if something does happen to force you out of that inertia and the the circle of life is just kind of talking about that there is a season for things and we that's so true where people denigrate certain even like weather patterns the other day somebody said to me they weren't really like putting it down but they said oh it's really cold out there isn't it and i said oh i i have enjoyed it so much because it was true i was just thinking as i was walking it's a very brisk autumn day. I was thinking, I love these days. And I was kind of dreading it up until that point because, you know, there had been such beautiful Indian summer. But it was just like a very um, brisk autumn day, and I enjoyed the heck out of it and taking that walk. And when that person said that, I was like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying this. Okay, so this is... Mother Mary, love and peace. Let go of the need to be right. Choose peace. Mother healing is possible at this time. Hmm, interesting. Let's see how this connects to everything. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is one of the best loved saints, masters, and guides of the world. Although she has had a huge part to play in the Catholic faith, she can bring faith peace, and love to anyone who calls on her. She is the saint of the people. She works directly with the angels of peace to bring healing to the world, particularly where there is conflict, and is dedicated to supporting children and mothers. She is the spiritual embodiment of unconditional love and acceptance. It is time to let go of conflict or the need to be right. The more you fight for the point you want to prove, the unhappier you will be. Pointing out the mistakes or mishaps of others just blocks the road to love in your own life. Mary, the Divine Mother of Acceptance, is with you now, encouraging you to forgive. Forgiveness is not about letting anyone get away with their bad choices, but about choosing to create your own happiness. Mother Mary also brings healing to you and your mother. If you miss her, are out of contact with her, or have an old trauma that needs healing, Know that Mary's miraculous light is here now to wash away the darkness. And um, so I would, I would say, you notice that I used as an example about, you know, quitting your job and staying home to raise your children. Now, I didn't, I was just talking off the top of my head. So maybe there's somebody out there who 
has been wanting to do that, but you're kind of agonizing over the decision. You're afraid that your significant other will not approve, that they will say, because I, I have heard of that. And I'm, I'm not, this is not to pick on men. I'm just saying, I'm just trying to use the proper pronouns that this woman, I don't know if it was somebody I knew or I was just reading about it. it might have been to Deary Abbey or something, wanted to stay home with the, the child. She was working and so was the, um, her um, partner. And he was mad because he was like, well, I have to go to work and he wanted her to work too. So this is what happens when somebody doesn't like their job. They feel like the other person is getting some kind of special treatment that they get to stay home. They don't have to go to work. Um, this doesn't always happen because some people really like what they do and they wouldn't argue with the other person and they wouldn't even want to be home. Not everybody wants to be home. So these kinds of conflicts do come up apparently and Maybe that's something that somebody out there needed to hear, that perhaps you have to um, forgive somebody for having a hard attitude about this and, and not feel like um, you're being forced to, to be at work when you want to be raising your child. The other thing, too, is that, as I said before, when I was talking about Saturn and Sagittarius, People who are resentful of somebody who has hurt them in some way sometimes use that to blame everything in their life. Well, I would have been able to accomplish this, that, and the other thing if, you know, my parent hadn't done this to me when I was 10 years old or if this ex hadn't treated me this way. And that has to change as well. Because you are the creator of your own reality. And yes, bad things do happen, but it's also true that they do not define you. Only you decide if you're going to allow a particular situation to define you. So anyway, Sagittarius, I hope that you got something from this. And... I wish you all the best. If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. Otherwise, take care. Bye.